Hi, this is Ready Freddy Washington, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. And today we are here with the one and only Ready Freddy Washington. How you doing, Ready Freddy? How are you? Nice to be here. Nice to, me. nice to see you. Nice to catch up. I've gotten to know you a little bit over the years. Uh, we, we had a great interview a few years ago on ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Check it out. Go to ForBassPlayersOnly. Search Freddy Washington or Ready Freddy Washington. You can read about Patrice Russian and the uh, musical upbringing in the the Oakland Bay Area and all that great stuff and uh, it's been probably a couple of years since we did that so I wanted to catch up interestingly the very first time I saw your name and heard your playing was on an Anita Baker record called same old love yes. and she did that uh, 365 days of the year and you did this really cool slapping thing that was my <laughs> first intro to you back yeah. in the 80s and uh, well tell me what's what's keeping you busy right now I know for the last probably nine years or so Steely Dan has been keeping you pretty busy so why don't we start with tell me about that gig oh that's it it's been a great gig um, I've been with Steely Dan since 06 2006 and they've been touring almost every year so that's been keeping me pretty busy and then you know in town stuff because I live in Los Angeles that keeps me fairly busy as well with you know with little studio stuff and you know, it's not like it used to be back in the 70s and early 80s, but now we tour now, so <laughs> yeah. so it's been good. It, that's interesting, though. Uh, Steely Dan, for decades must be, I've always thought of Steely Dan as strictly a studio band, and uh, you, you buy their records, you hear them on the radio, this is, again, back in the 70s and 80s, but it's been for the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, they've been on the road they've been touring which sounds opposite of my whole image of steely dan so what why do you suppose the guys opted to do that what was the thinking behind that well i'm not sure because i came in a lot later um like i said i came in in 06 and they had already been on tour doing some tours and maybe it was just a thing they really wanted to get out and play their music i mean after you going to you know you're cutting records this and that and and people want to really see you perform now. So there was, I think there was that vehicle as well. And they really wanted to get out and, and play because they're, they're really excited about playing music. Yeah. I, I've got to ask you, you are certainly a, a, a bassist, a, an artist, a musician in your own right with everything you've done with Patrice Russian and Stevie Wonder and Herbie Hancock and on and on and on. But with Steely Dan, the obvious question is the, the, the comparison to Chuck Rainey, if there is one at all. I, I'm wondering if, you know, are they saying, well, play it like Chuck played it or, or we want Freddie because we hired Freddie or is it somewhere in between or you know, Walter and Donald are they looking for anything from Chuck or are you just free to just be ready Freddie and do your thing well when they called me they called me and they they didn't tell me to play it like anybody they just let me do my thing but the thing is Chuck everybody knows Chuck is a great bass player and Chuck has done some amazing things their music is really particular and you have freedom to move and Chuck did some really nice things and things some things that were written for him to do as well and then he embellished on them and that's what I do as well I'll read something and then I'll embellish on it so the feel I'm staying true to what the feel of the records are but I have I have room to do my thing as well and I love and I love what Chuck did so there's, it's a lot of great stuff, but it still leaves me room to, to play my stuff as well. Oh, good. That's pretty much the answer I was expecting. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your equipment. You've been with Ken Smith and using Ken Smith basses for as long as I can remember. Oh, what, yeah. what, what do you like about the Ken Smith basses so much? Why, do you, why have you been using them forever? Yeah. When I first got uh, wind of Ken Smith in 1986. Um, I had just did the, the Rapture record with Anita Baker, and I was using my Fender and I was using a Yamaha BB3000 at the time and I heard about Ken and someone had it and I checked it out and I played this thing and then all of a sudden I was getting called to do records they were writing music for the the low the fifth for the for the low B so the C just to compete with the synthesizer bass so I there I forget the guy's name and I rented the instrument on a few record dates and I really loved the sound of it 
And then I got in touch with Ken and said, look, I need one of these basses because I just love what it, the feel of it, the, the tone of it, the craftsmanship of the instrument. It's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous instrument, and I've played on a lot of things. Yes. That was around the time when uh, Anthony Jackson, certainly, and John Patitucci and the whole craze. I remember I got a five-string back in the 80s, and I was as guilty as anyone, even on, on a wedding. You know, I'd be like, way down, much lower than I should be. But uh, uh, that was a, a great time for that whole that whole thing to take off. Now there's some guys that are – I was at, at the NAM show this year. I was playing a tw- holding and trying to play a 24-string bass. I mean, <laughs> it just gets crazy. Sick. Six is enough for you? Five is enough? What do you... Five is enough for me. I mean, I don't, I don't need... I mean, when you get into six, seven, and that, you get into, into some virtuoso guitar kind of stuff. I play the bass guitar. I play, I play bass, and, and, that, and that's where I keep it. And, you know, I, I know the role, of that, the role of that instrument, and I really, really start to try to stay true to it. So the low B, that's enough. Yes. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, Steely Dan is keeping you plenty busy, but I know you've always got some kind of side projects and some recordings, and you're also a songwriter and arranger, producer, all of those things. So other than Steely Dan, what else is keeping you busy these days? So, some record projects. I just got finished um, doing a new record project with uh, saxophonist Michael Lington and uh, producer Barry Eastman that, you know, Oh, that's on the East Coast. It did a lot of, you know, Freddie Jackson's big hits and a, a lot of a lot of a lot of people. So stuff stuff like that. It's not a whole lot of recording, you know. And you know, and plus I have my song, you know, Forget Me Nots that I did right. with Patrice and and all that stuff. And that stuff still pays me good residuals. So I'm lucky. <laughs> you ever do anything with Patrice anymore? No, we haven't we haven't worked together in, in a long time. You know, I've been doing my thing and she teaches now and stuff and. You know, maybe one day we'll get together and do something again. It'd be fun. Well, I hope so. Uh, how about the future, Freddie? What else would you like to do that you haven't already accomplished? Oh, man, I, I'd like to do more of the same. I'd like to do maybe some more producing. You know, I've, I've, I've produced, and maybe I'd like, to, I'd like to do more of that. But I'm still excited about my instrument. I want to get better and better at it because... My thing is that when somebody hears me play, the best compliment I, compliment I could ever get is that, man, every time I hear you, you sound better and better and better. So that makes me not stagnant. I want to, because I'm in love with that instrument. Well, I would, I would concur with that statement. That's how I feel when I hear you play. Uh, last question, Freddie, and I, I think I asked you this last time, but I'm going to ask you again. What would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music. <laughs> well, there's nothing else outside of music. I'm going down with the ship. So, I mean, you know, I was, and, and I believe in my heart of hearts that I, that's what I was put here to do, is to play music and play the bass guitar. Because there's a healing in music and the way people feel about hearing you play and hearing you play a certain way and, and, the, and the whole movement. I wasn't here to be a attorney, a policeman, fireman, any of that stuff. I know what I was here to do. And if I came back, I'd want to do it the same exact way. Well, lucky for you and lucky for all of us, things <laughs> turned out the way they did. Freddie Washington, great catching up with you. Keep, you. keep doing what you're doing. We'll keep enjoying it. Much luck, continued success to you. Thank you, I appreciate it. I am John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. You like the groove, you. 